This video is brought to you by Squarespace. From websites and online stores to marketing tools and analytics, Squarespace is the all-in-one platform to build a beautiful online presence and run your business. Hey everyone. So today's video is another upgrade video. Uh, last time I did an upgrade video, I accidentally called it open crate and that will not be happening again, ever. <laughs> so this is actually the April 2022 box. So hopefully I don't know what's in here. <laughs> so now for the reveal, should probably zoom out a little bit yeah all right here's the package i really hope it's paint <laughs> i'm actually i'm gonna open this one first because i don't want anything spoiled i want to keep this sticker i want to like preserve it so i could use it somewhere in my sketchbook because it looks really cute all right our first sticker uh, now to open this, so excited. Oh, it's paint markers, again. <laughs> it's an avocado, thanks. Okay, look, I'm not disappointed. I'm just like a little bit shocked, you know? I enjoyed the paint markers last time, not gonna lie. Uh, especially the big ones, but they are like I have to admit they are really hard to use Okay, so we have Edding permanent acrylic paint markers. This one's five to ten milliliters same here, and then we have two to three milliliters two to three milliliters milliliters millimeters What am I saying? Um, but yeah <laughs> Okay and then we have this one here, one to two millimeters. My God. Oh, and a white one. I could always use a white acrylic marker. Um, and then this pencil here. Oh yeah, just like a regular HB pencil, I think. It looks really cool. It doesn't look regular, but I'll see. Okay, I'll take this out of the way and open this here. Okay, this is a very interesting sticker design. Um, I kind of love it. Like, let's make art not work. My camera cut off, but thankfully not like before I did anything crazy. So yeah, this is the thing, the, the book that they give you. I actually spent like five minutes during deleted footage or like unrecorded footage trying to remember what the name of the book is. Uh, yeah, it's, it's a book. Anyways, um, so this here has, like, a guide to the art supplies, acrylic adventure. Um, so yeah, it's a guide to the art supplies here, helps you learn how to use it, which is going to be really helpful for me personally. So, just a guide to that. Uh, oh, and this is the artist. Uh, some of his art and They show like a variety of artists. I do want to see some of the art made with these pens because I have no idea currently what I'm gonna do Okay, so next in the box is I think a canvas Or oh wait, no, it's a pack of papers. I'm actually kind of nervous for this video. Like I'm gonna be 100% honest I'm not sure what I'm gonna make um because the color selection is a little bit tricky and yeah, I'm just worried. All right, so I have all the supplies as well as my sketchbook uh, gathered around here. I read through the manual and it really helped. Like it had a lot of really nice tips and it also explained that these aren't actually normal paint markers. Like you can actually squeeze the paint out and I guess that makes it much easier to blend. So I'm going to be experimenting with these supplies uh, in my sketchbook and also 
on a piece of canvas paper that they gave us um, just to see the difference on how they perform. Now, I don't want to use the paint markers on their own because I really like doing mixed media stuff and I feel like this color theme isn't really my thing. Uh, so I'm going to be using, in addition to these paint markers, my Prismacolor Premier Colored Pencils. So yeah, I'll just be having fun, mixed media, and seeing how these work with these. So I'll try putting paint on top of the pencils and pencil on top of the paints and just see what happens. So for the swatching, I was actually thinking, why not do the swatching on this page? Uh, since I haven't used it yet. Uh, I'll do the swatching here, maybe do a bit of swatching on this tone tan paper that's already here. I just need to glue it on. And then I can move on to these two, the spread here. If I decide to work in my sketchbook, I'll work on this spread. But if not, I'll work on this paper or maybe some larger paper even. I don't know. I'm still figuring out what this video is. <laughs> Hello, so it's me from the future and this is when I finally start actually swatching out the art supplies. Um, so I started off with just opening the markers and testing them out. And at first, all the markers worked really well, but unfortunately it kind of goes downhill. <laughs> Anyways, this is the 3D paint liner and it's actually pretty cool. Like I enjoyed using it. And of course the thick black one was my favorite. But here's where it goes downhill. I tried mixing those pens into the 3D pen, so like the thick paints, and basically all of the nibs got plugged and like almost entirely destroyed. So the red there doesn't work on the black, and even the white is pretty messed up at this point. The blue is the only one that kept working. Anyways, I would flip the nib to like the other side, and that seemed to help a bit, but it still wasn't perfect. Basically, the acrylic pens can't mix. Like if, if the nib touches wet paint, it just starts to act weird. So yeah, that was a bit unfortunate. Anyways, this is me trying to like fill that one corner on the page, but it keeps getting ruined. <laughs> I wanted to show all the mistakes in this video. So like all the failed attempts just to keep it real. <laughs> After all, like I have very little experience with acrylic pens and they're honestly a very hard medium for me. <laughs> so I wanted to test how the colored pencils and acrylic paint pens would work together before I tried doing anything with them. So first I layered the colored pencils on top of the paint pens, and then I layered the paint pen on top of the colored pencil. And both methods were actually pretty smooth. Speaking of things that are pretty smooth, I'd like to take a quick break to smoothly introduce you guys to the sponsor of this video, Squarespace. As you guys probably already know, Squarespace is an all-in-one platform where you can create your very own website or online store. I'm currently building my own art shop using Squarespace and it's been made very easy thanks to the templates that they provide. In addition to the templates, you can use the built-in photo editor and design tools to really customize your website and make it your own. There's also a lot of different content types that you can add to your website, such as text, photos, videos, contact forms, galleries, and products. With Squarespace extensions, you can actually connect your store to third-party tools, such as print-on-demand services. I personally use a print-on-demand service to create my prints and stickers, since I don't currently have the time or resources to do that myself. So if this sounds like something you'd like to try out, head to squarespace.com slash coffeebean and you can get 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. Thank you so much to Squarespace for sponsoring this video. Uh, it's honestly very exciting. And yeah, on to the rest of the video. Okay, so after swatching all of the colors and seeing how they worked, I started drawing this portrait that I found on Pinterest. Uh, personally, when I'm in an art block slash I don't know what to do with these art supplies kind of mood, I just default to Pinterest portraits because um, I think they're kind of fun. Anyways, for this first portrait, I decided to color it mostly using colored pencils. Um, and the, the method that I used to color it was actually very much inspired by Chris Hong art. I absolutely love her portraits. She's so talented. And I used her technique of putting a base layer of like a really vibrant color. So this like olive, neon green color. I forget the name, <laughs> but yeah, 
I use that green color as a base and it really works. Like the green spreads throughout the entire artwork or like portrait and it unifies all the colors together, like the skin tone and the hair and the scarf that she's wearing. It's really cool. I, I really enjoyed using this technique. I forgot to mention earlier, but the H pencil that I used to make the sketch was like pretty nice, but to be honest, I prefer HB or 2B pencils for sketching and the kneaded eraser wasn't able to remove a lot of the pencil because it was so hard and like thin, I believe. Um, but yeah, here I'm using the chisel, the black chisel marker, which was very satisfying. I had a lot of fun with that. Um, but yeah, I don't hate the pencil. I just don't really think I'd use it. It's not really my thing and it kind of interfered with the colored pencil. So the colored pencil would have difficulty coloring some areas because the pencil would be like digging deep into the paper. Uh, I feel like that's mostly my fault. I have a very heavy hand when drawing, so yeah. Anyways, here I'm using the 3D liner arts pen thing. <laughs> I forgot the name, but I'm using that thing to try and make the earrings but it didn't really work. Like it didn't stand out at all against the scarf color. So I added colored pencil on top of it. It did create like a kind of neat texture and 3D effect, but yeah, I really didn't make use of the art supplies that much in this first drawing. But later on, I get into the paint markers a lot more. Also, if I'm being brutally honest, I don't like the 3D liner thing. Like, I don't see what's the point of it. I might as well just take a tube of paint, squeeze into a palette, and then use that. Because with the 3D liner, it, it take, it's not very precise. So you need a brush anyways. So why use the paper as a palette when you could just... Anyways, I'm so confused. I didn't really like that art supply, but it did make the job of making art with these pens much more manageable because it was essentially just a tube of paint. So yeah, for that reason, I like this art supply, but I wouldn't buy it like voluntarily. <laughs> Okay, so at this point, I genuinely had no idea what to draw on this page because I really liked the portrait and I didn't want to ruin it. So I dealt with that by drawing the most horrendous side profile sketch thing that I have ever drawn in my life. And since the pencil didn't erase that great, I ended up just covering up this monstrosity with a piece of like Strathmore tone tan paper. That's honestly how I deal with sketches that aren't going great. Like, I don't stress over it or try and fix it too for too long. I just move on with something else. Um, but yeah, I was having a lot of trouble figuring out what that thing would be. Um, so yeah, here I just waste a bunch of ink coloring that piece of paper black and then scrap it. <laughs> so in my experience, whenever I'm in this kind of mood, I just draw what I'm very, very comfortable with. So in my case, that's just an eye. <laughs> Uh, oh, also, I messed up the page with the green marker. It looked so ugly, so I covered it with a clearance tag. <laughs> and yeah, I used the same technique for the eyeball as the portrait. I just made like a base layer of blue and then went over it with like all the warm colors. So yeah, honestly, shout out to Chris Hong. I really love her art and it, it carried this video. <laughs> So for this next spread, my goal was to use the main markers. So like the blue, the red, and the white, and the yellow as well. 
I didn't really like the green marker, I have to admit. I wanted to stick to just like a primary color, color theme. So that's what I did. Anyways, in order to use the paint markers, I wanted to do simplistic little doodles coming out of this portrait's head. Uh, so the portrait will be made with uh, colored pencils, uh, just like in the previous page. But this time there'd be a reason to use like the really, really bright colors for like all the doodles there. Also, most of the doodles do have a meaning behind them. So like, I'm not saying this was a vent piece. It was more of like, I'm kind of stressed right now and freaking out because I have to use these art supplies and I need to post this video, especially since this was my first ever sponsored video. It was so scary. I'm scared right now voiceovering this. Like I'm actually freaking out. I pulled an all-nighter for a YouTube video. That never happened before. Anyways, so I feel like this, this illustration is really fitting, you know? Like I actually think it relatable it's more relatable to me now as I'm sleep deprived and freaking out than it was when I actually drew the artwork so that's kind of funny to me anyways I just remembered something that I wanted to talk about when I was suffering through this the pink marker drove me insane like it's a brand new marker but the nibs are both destroyed somehow I think it's my fault like is it me does anyone else have like editing acrylic paint markers and if you do do they like do the nibs get destroyed very easily or is that just me being rough so yeah I'd, I'd really love to know because I can be notoriously clumsy and heavy-handed with art supplies and honestly the blue pen was really nice like uh full of paint and it ran very smoothly so yeah it's probably me <laughs> Anyways, here in this part, I'm just finishing up the doodles, uh, adding some final touches and whatnot. It takes a lot of patience because I have to wait for the layers to dry. But yeah, finally, the moment came for the colored pencils, which I was really happy about. Uh, now, unfortunately, I was impatient and stupid and didn't erase the pencil lines. And because of that, the colored pencils didn't layer as smoothly as they could have. Also, the fingers, like those hands look wild. Like the fingers do not look proportionate and some of the finger angles are questionable. So it's okay though. I still really love how this piece turned out. Uh, I'm really, I'm really happy with it. It was so much fun to do and I still think it looks pretty cool. Also, I really, really love how the hair turned out. Like I was very soft and careful with where I was putting the darks and the lights and whatnot. And I think it paid off. So, so happy with the hair. I think it looks awesome. The skin is a little bit orange, but I still, I still kind of like it. And also um, I'm happy with like the overall composition, like how I made the black reach the hands and whatnot. Cause before it looked a little bit odd. So yeah, that's about it for this portrait illustration thing. I just added paint markers to the face stickers and just like some highlights, final touches. But yeah, um, that's, that's this thing done. <laughs> I can't speak. Oh yeah, now I can speak. This page. This page was a disaster, but I'm keeping all the footage because I want to be very transparent with how bad some sketchbook pages can go. So I thought I would do a cute, aesthetically pleasing paint marker only illustration on this page, just like a bunch of cute outfits, but um, it does not look good. <laughs> like, it looks so ugly. It looks like my younger brother drew it. Now for safety reasons, I won't specify which younger brother, but it was definitely one of them. Anyways, I'm sorry if I'm a little bit negative. I promise it's just sleep deprivation, <laughs> but uh, I covered up the pages with some scrap paper, which was really fun. And like, honestly, so happy with how this like turned out. So like overall, it was a very positive experience. This video was fun. I don't wanna like give the impression that it was not fun. I'm just tired, but yeah, I was having so much fun here. I was using some like stationary pile supplies to like add things to the page. Also here I'm using like the black chisel tip marker thing to like everything, I'm calling everything thing right now. 
I'm so tired. Anyways, I'm using that to like add ink to the stamps and it actually worked pretty well. I think I added too much ink, um, but to be fair, this was my first time ever using a stamp in my life. So it makes sense that it wasn't as clean as it could have been. Uh, I also got these butterfly stamps from Stationery Pal as well. They're honestly so beautiful. Like I really love how the butterflies turned out and it was a lot of fun. It was a nice change of pace after forcing myself to use paint markers for so long. Um, but yeah, again, I just want to say like, I did enjoy the paint markers. Oh, I just messed up that butterfly. That was painful to rewatch. Like it was painful in real life, but rewatching it is somehow worse. Anyways, as I was saying, the paint markers were fun, but they were also very hectic. And I was like bamboozled as to what to draw with them. <laughs> like, uh, yeah, it was, it was a challenge and I love challenges and I still really appreciate the box. So I just want to reiterate like nice, big thank you to Upgrade for sending me this box. Uh, even though it was a tough one, it was fun. Like overall, I really loved the experience. Anyway, so here I'm just figuring out where to put these stickers that they gave with the box. Uh, honestly, I really liked the stickers this time. So, and I had no idea they were transparent. I thought they had white background. So at first I was a little unsure about them, but when I realized they were transparent, I got really excited and started putting them everywhere. Anyways, after putting like those stickers and that's that sticker up there, it's actually not a sticker. It's a tag that came with a shirt I bought, but it coincidentally went perfectly with the color theme. Uh, I was so happy when I realized. <laughs> Anyways, uh, here I'm sketching like a random cartoon character kid thing. Like why, why am I so dumb when I'm tired? Here I'm sketching a cartoon character <laughs> and I dressed him in like a, like a jacket, the same jacket that I failed at before and a beanie. Again, just like the sketches underneath. But yeah, I'm not super thrilled with how it turned out, but it looks cute, so I kept it. Plus it matches the color theme on the other page and I really wanted to bring in some blue and pink into this, this second page. So that was the main purpose for sketching it. And honestly, it's cute. It's a sketchbook, it's whatever. So yeah. Okay, so that's it for today's video. Um, this is the spread. I'm just leaving it at this. I'm not gonna touch it anymore or add anything else. I'm honestly really happy with how this artwork turned out. Uh, I think it's really cool. And I love how the colored pencils, like the really soft colored pencils look with the paint markers. I just wish the paint markers worked a bit more consistently. Like the blue worked very well um, and so it was really like easy to use and make it stand out. But I wish the pink especially and um, oh yeah just the pink. Oh and the white. I honestly just wish the pink and the white worked a little better but it's alright. So I'll just flip back here to this original spread. I didn't really use the paint markers a lot here, so I feel like this is almost unrelated, except that I used like a little bit of the yellow and the black. But yeah, it was really fun going back to colored pencil work. I definitely want to use my colored pencils more often and just like improve my skill at it. Now this box was honestly such a challenge for me and I actually didn't use the green at all, which is kind of embarrassing. Actually, I think I used it like a tiny bit on this page. Anyways, even though this box was really like such a challenge for me, like it was not what I was used to, um, it was fun overall. I feel like I had a nice experience experimenting with it and I feel like this is a realistic-ish representation of how I use my sketchbook. Like not every page turns out perfect the way I want it to and like I love scrapbooking things on top of my failures. <laughs> I might add like a couple more drawings maybe later on. Just like pile them on top of the scrap paper. Or I might just leave it like this because I kind of like it like this. So yeah, that's all I have to ramble about for this video. Um, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. 
and I'll see you guys in the next video in a week or two weeks, most likely. Bye.